Does the M2 MacBook Air absolutely destroy Windows laptops? Well, today we will find out because we have the latest and greatest Dell XPS 13 Plus here, one that is specced with the same 512 SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM. It has the latest Alder Lake i7 chip, which comes with the efficiency cores as well. So not only are we gonna test out and compare the design, the speakers, the webcam, some benchmarks, as well as real world productivity tasks, but we're gonna test out the battery life. I have both of these at 60% battery. I set the Dell to best power efficiency while not doing anything with the Mac. It handles everything automatically. And as we go through this comparison, we will see what the real world battery life is like because we know that brands greatly exaggerate the battery life. So now let's go ahead and jump in. Now, if you guys want a chance to win one of these new M2 MacBook Airs, we are doing a giveaway and I don't care where you are in the world, I will pay for the shipping, I'll pay for all the fees and taxes. All I have to do is one, be subscribed to Max Tech, and two, comment on our launch week videos. You can comment on each video and then on July 25th, we are gonna be choosing a winner in one of our videos. So make sure you guys do not miss it. Don't fall for scammers, you don't have to pay for anything, just make sure to tune in and to be subscribed. Now, I wanna start with the overall design and say that this Dell XPS 13 Plus is super clean. I love that the keyboard goes all the way to the sides. We have these uh, touch buttons up top, which Apple kind of got rid of with their touch bar. And then you don't even see a trackpad here. It is built in, you can actually press the surface, and it is one of the best Windows laptop trackpads. Pads. But of course, the MacBook's trackpad is better. It is the best on the market. The keyboard on this MacBook is also fantastic. The Dell is also very good. They did a killer job in such a thin machine. Now, even though the MacBook Air has this redesign with these slim bezels that match everywhere, the Dell still looks sleeker, more modern with these tiny bezels with the webcam built in up top. Whereas the MacBook has that large notch, which doesn't take up any space because they added extra pixels but it is not as clean. Now, just overall design-wise, I love the Dell XPS. I prefer it. It is much smaller overall, even though the screen size is about the same. Um, and it is just a nice, sleek machine. It's so sleek that it doesn't even have a headphone jack. On the right-hand side, we have one Thunderbolt USB-C port, and they do give you an adapter in the box, whereas the MacBook has a headphone jack. On the left side, the Dell gives you another Thunderbolt port, whereas the MacBook gives you two Thunderbolt ports and a MagSafe fast charger, which means that those other two ports are available for use, and you don't need to use one of them for a headphone adapter either. And with that, the Dell does cost $250 more than the MacBook. As far as the displays, the Dell has a higher resolution, 3456 by 2160 compared to 2560 by 1664. Now, can I tell a difference looking at them right in front of me at this far away? No, I cannot tell a difference in sharpness, which is why Apple has not increased resolution in the displays, they keep it the same. Uh, now on the Dell, uh, I actually lowered the brightness a little bit, uh, cause it was telling me, hey, it's an OLED screen, uh, the brightness is using a lot of power, the Mac is completely maxed out, but if you do max out both of these, uh, they're both the same identical 500 nits. Dell's OLED screen does have better viewing angles, and if you're watching videos, especially HDR, you do get more pop than the plain LCD screen on the MacBook. But with that, color accuracy is similar, but with OLEDs, if you adjust the brightness, it goes off. So you have to use a calibrator and you have to keep it the same. Now, when it comes down to speakers, neither of these have any speaker grills at all. They are hidden inside and Apple made a big deal about their new quad speakers. So let's go ahead and compare them. All right, guys, you heard that yourselves. 
the Dell is extremely loud, much louder than the MacBook. The M2 MacBook Air actually got quieter with the redesign. It got a little bit more bass, it sounds a little more rich, whereas the Dell got way louder than before. Uh, the highs are crisp. Now, you don't have a deep bass, it doesn't sound as natural or balanced compared to the MacBook, but I would take that loudness capability any day. This is the quality of the M2 MacBook Air's 1080p camera and microphones. And this is Dell's 720p webcam and their microphones. Go ahead and let me know down below which one looks better and which one sounds better. And now let's get into performance. The first thing I'm gonna do is run this web browsing test. Take a look at that difference. I'm using Chrome on both to make it fair. 333 compared to 133. Now, of course, we are set to best power efficiency, so let's switch over to best performance. All right, that is a good improvement, but still not matching up to the M2 chip. And with that, I now hear the fans running just for web browsing. Now, Alder Lake does have good performance. It does have those power efficiency cores, but it does suck a lot of power when you're needing it. And just to show you guys the difference, I have Intel Power Gadget opened up and then our power metrics on the Mac. And just sitting here, we're running at 21 watts on the Dell. And it's showing me the CPU is being used. It's running at two gigahertz. But with that, we're using a lot of graphics power here. Uh, I don't know if that's just to run this high resolution display. It takes a lot of performance. Now they used to have even higher resolution ones and I said, it's crazy. The battery life was terrible. Uh, and now they lowered a little bit, but they made it OLED. On the M2, our package power is literally uh, less than half a watt, 0 0.17, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It's sipping power, incredibly efficient. And now let's go ahead and run Geekbench 5. We'll see what the performance is and also how much power it uses. Once again, we are in the full performance mode. If you go into the power savings, it will use less power and slow down your system. But here we care about performance. The Dell can actually use up to 64 watts on the CPU, but right now, because these are Ultrabooks, we're testing them unplugged. So it looked like the peak that I saw was about 25 or so, whereas the MacBook, it peaked at 21. All right, we have our results and this is laughable. We have 1,900 for the single compared to 1,182 and 8,138 compared to 5,476. And this is the performance we're getting because we are unplugged and it's greatly limiting the Alder Lake chip that is a fast chip because it sucks power. If we did have it plugged in, it would be in the 7,000s range, much better. And now let's compare the graphics. This model right here is the eight core, not the 10 core. We think that for most people, it is the better choice. We will be doing an eight core versus 10 core detailed comparison coming up soon. And here we have Intel's Iris XE high-end graphics that Intel makes for Ultrabooks. All right, whoa, okay. Well, our Dell died on us right when this test got done. Um, now, of course, I don't know how long you guys are watching this video for. We shoot these for hours and hours. A 25 minute one might be four and a half hours of shooting, but there's no doubt that this thing is dying extremely fast, especially when we start pushing the system. So let me grab our cable, plug it in. You guys see we got 26,139 on the binned eight core version of the M2 chip. And the Dell got 13,401. That is pretty much half the performance of the binned M2 chip. Now, I also ran it a second time, plugged in, and then that jumped up to 17,472. Definitely closer, but still off. But with that said, the MacBook, it performs the same regardless of if you have it plugged in, which is excellent. Now you guys saw the Dell die. So let's talk about the battery life. I think I saw a 3% rating and I don't know if it died at 1% or if it died at, I don't know, two or zero. Right now we have six, but of course we've had it plugged in here. Our MacBook on the other hand, is a lot better. Take a guess what the MacBook is at. The Dell burned through 
almost 60% of the battery. They both started there. The MacBook is at 40%. Yes, it only burned through 20% in all of that use. That is incredible and that is why if you're doing light use, you can get 12 hours of battery life, real world battery life or mixed use, still probably eight, nine hours of productivity because of how power efficient it is. Now, of course, with the Dell, you could get an LCD 1080p screen that will save a lot of battery life, but then the screen is gonna be noticeably worse. You're not gonna have the beautiful colors or the OLED, so it's a big trade-off. And now let's test out some real-world photo editing. Now for both of these, I do have GPU acceleration enabled. For the M2, it does allow full graphics acceleration, but because the Iris graphics aren't as powerful and it's not the unified architecture, it only allows limited graphics acceleration. With the Dell, we are now plugged in and I do have a set to best performance. Let's flip through these raw edited images. As you guys can see, the MacBook is switching much faster even though uh, the Dell does have faster SSDs, noticeably faster. As far as the slider performance, we're getting a little bit of glitchiness right here. The fans are kicked on. We are limited by some of the graphics performance. That's a little smoother there. The MacBook looks to be perfectly smooth. I mean, look at that guys, insanely smooth. I wonder if the Dell is still limiting performance because our battery is low. It is at 8%. I turned off the low power mode settings, but it could still be doing that. So I'm gonna get, wait a little bit for it to charge up a bit more. All right guys, we let that charge up for about 10 minutes. We're at 15% now. The system cooled down, it was shut down. Uh, and now let's go ahead and export these 50 images. I have my timer set up right here and bam. Right out of the gate, the MacBook is flying compared to the Dell. Our graphics are maxed out and the CPU is also changing from about half to close to being maxed out. Our temps are also quite up there because it is a fanless laptop. Dang, and it is done already. That took a minute and 10 seconds. The Dell is mostly relying on its CPU and bam, we are done. The Dell took two minutes and 21 seconds, literally taking twice as long to do this task when it is plugged in in best performance mode compared to unplugged. Now I'm personally very curious, how long will the Dell take if we go ahead and unplug it and you're somewhere where you don't have access to plug it in? Now, I think a lot of times, if you know the battery's not great and you know the performance drops, you will plug it in, but what is the difference? We're still set to best performance on battery power. Okay, we have our results and that took three minutes and 42 seconds. So more than three times as long compared to the MacBook if they're both unplugged and the Dell set to the best performance mode. Now I also have to let you guys know that if you buy the base model MacBook Air with the 256 gig SSD and you're running anything else uh, but having Lightroom open, it can slow down dramatically. So you have to at least get a 512 model with the uh, M2 MacBook Air to get this jaw-dropping performance. And now let's test out simple 4K editing because you're not gonna be doing anything crazy on this Dell. A lot of people say even the MacBook can't do it, but you guys see the performance. So here I have DaVinci Resolve Studio opened up on both version 18. And when we're just playing back this 4K timeline, HEVC that does have a couple effects, both of them are playing it back perfectly. And almost right away, the dual fans on the Dell started kicking up. I can hear them running in the background while we're playing back. And of course, the MacBook is fanless. Now, one interesting thing is that our MacBook, it is running really cool, even though it is fanless. It has a really good media engine that is very, very efficient. So it looks like our GPU clusters are at 43 degrees Celsius here. CPU is also very low. Now, if it starts adding a bunch of effects, titles, animations, yes, it will start to heat up, but here it's fine. Whereas the Dell, it also has media engines, but they're not based on the same ARM five nanometer efficient architecture. And now let's go ahead and export this short five minute project. Our MacBook is flying through this export 
It took a minute and 32 seconds to export that. That is insanely fast. And the Dell took seven minutes and 39 seconds. That is about five times faster on battery power compared to being plugged in. And of course it would take longer if it's unplugged. And after doing all of those tests, shooting for hours, let's see what the MacBook has in terms of battery life remaining. 20%. We started with 60% on both. This thing died and the MacBook still had 40%. We did a bunch more tests uh, with this plugged in, the Mac unplugged, and we're still at 20%. That shows off the amazing efficiency of Apple Silicon and the amazing performance as well. So with all of that said, getting back to the main question, does the new M2 MacBook Air destroy Windows laptops? Well, if we're looking at it from the standpoint of a luxury, modern, thin laptop using the latest uh, architecture, the latest Intel chips and designs, dual fans, well, yes, it does. Kills it in performance, it is cheaper, and the battery life is way better, the overall experience is way better. As long as you get the 16 gig 512, it's still cheaper, and it performs amazing and it's fanless no uh, no high fans none of that stuff so there you guys go that is where we are at in 2022 if you can afford spending 1600 bucks 1850 the mac is the way to go go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe and help us reach our goal of a million subscribers check out one of those great videos right over there this has been max max tech and i'll see you in the next video